Well, hello and welcome to Movement Church Online. I'm Chris, I'm the pastor here at Movement Church, and I want to say on this Sunday, on May 8th, Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms and grandmas out there and the stepmoms and all the, all, all the adopted moms. Happy Mother's Day to you. We're so glad, so honored that you would make the decision to be here with us or to be in your place with us in, in our place. Thank you so much for joining in with us today. Today we've got a great a great day planned as we got some got, got the second part of our series, Grown Up Prayers, um, and we also have some worship at the end. But before we get there, there's something special I want to let you know that we're doing today for our moms. I I told you last week that we were doing something special in person and online for our moms and something that would bless our community. So here's what we're doing for moms today. If you're a mom watching this video or if you know a mom who should be watching this video, you need to share this with them because for every mom that likes this video, we are going to give $5 to Turning Point Pregnancy Center. Turning Point is an incredible agency within our community that, that provides resources uh, and mentoring and coaching for women going through facing unexpected pregnancy. And we believe that that's an incredible thing. And we want to combine the celebration of Mother's Day, the honoring of mothers today, with a great chance to bless our community and, a, and an organization that does incredible work to support moms in our community. So again, this is a great day to share this. This is a great day to send the link to someone, that if you know someone who should be watching this, or even if you know someone who just likes helping people and they could like the video, we want to give as much money as possible to Turning Point Pregnancy Center. And so for every mom that likes this video, $5 will be given to Turning Point Pregnancy Center by the end of this month. We're so excited to bless moms in our community through Turning Point Pregnancy Center. We think it's a great way to honor moms and to say, hey moms, what you have done, we want to help other moms be able to do. So moms, thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for everything that you are. Thank you for being such a great blessing within our church. Our church couldn't be the church that we are without strong women and without strong moms. And we want to say thank you so much and honor you on this Mother's Day. And as you're watching this video, at some point along the way, make sure to like this video so we can donate as much money possible to Turning Point Pregnancy Center. Like, well, like, like, like I said, today we're in the second part of our series, Grown Up Prayers. And we're going to dive into that right after this intro video. All right, well, a quick review as we jump into the second week of our series, Grown Up Prayers. God's priorities for prayer are different and better than our priorities. And that's what we said last week, that God's priorities for prayer are better and different than our priorities for prayer. And that doesn't mean that your priorities are wrong or bad. It just means that God has something better in, for us in prayer and better for, uh, for us as a result of our prayer if we pray according to his priorities. See, our priorities is that we want to get our prayers answered. More specifically, we want God to answer with a yes and a clear yes right away when we pray. God's priority is the development of a relationship with him that we would grow in our trust in him, grow in our dependence in him, grow in our understanding of him, grow in our alignment with his will. And so last week we looked to what Jesus taught in the Lord's Prayer to see a pattern and to see what, what he established as God's priorities, as Jesus's priorities, what set his prayers apart from the prayers of his disciples and the prayers of everyone else that he saw in his time, that Jesus established some priorities that God has in prayer for us. And so God's priorities is that God wants us to recognize his rightful place in the relationship, that he wants us to align with what matters to him, that he wants us to align our hearts and our lives with what matters to him. He wants us to submit and to surrender uh, our, our, our will and our ways to his will and to his ways. He wants us to remember that he is our provider and that he provides everything that we need. He wants us to daily remind ourselves of, of our need for his salvation. He wants us to come daily to repeatedly ask for him to do what in, in us, what only he can do in us, that he would change us, that he would transform us, that he would make us new, and that he would make us more like him. And he wants us to come to him over and over again, asking for strength for the moments that we feel weak. So that's where we have been. And today, here we are in week two of our mini-series, Grown Up Prayers. And if that was the teaching that I heard the first week of a series, I would be asking questions like you might be asking a question. And the, and, and the question that you might be asking, like I know I would be asking if I heard the, that teaching the very first week of this year, would be like, like if that's God's priorities, if all, if all of that is God's priorities in prayer, and very little of that seems to do with the things that we want to come to God and ask for, like 
Does God even care about the things that we ask for? Like, should we be asked? Like, should we spend so much of our time in prayer asking? And should we spend so much time in our prayer coming to God with requests? And like, should we, like, is it childish? Is it a childish approach to prayer to keep coming to God over and over about the things that we want God to do? Or is that something that we should avoid altogether because God has something better and God has something deeper and God has different priorities for us in prayer? And here is my answer. Nope. It's not childish at all. No, we, we actually should do that. In, in, it is not childish at all in prayer to keep coming to God with our desires and requests and our hopes and, re, and, and dreams. In fact, I would argue that it would be childish for us to think that because God has different priorities, that our priorities don't matter to God. And the reason I can say that so confidently is because, like I said last week, when Jesus' disciples asked him to teach them how to pray, they were asking Teach us to pray like you so that we can get our prayers answered like your prayers are answered. And when they came and asked that question, Jesus didn't scold his disciples for wanting to get their prayers answered like his prayers got answers. Jesus didn't say, well, you guys are coming with the wrong motive and you guys are coming like, like he didn't come with any of that. He didn't scold them. He simply pointed them in the direction of a different priority of God's priorities, of his priorities in prayer. And after Jesus first taught and modeled that incredible pattern of prayer, he took a breath, and then he continued to teach about prayer in a way that actually encourages us to keep bringing our requests, and keep bringing our hopes, and keep bringing our dreams, and keep bringing our desires to our heavenly Father. Here's what he taught in the next moments after he taught the Lord's model of prayer. Verse 5 of Luke chapter 11 says this, then teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, don't bother me. The door is locked for the night, and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. This story doesn't really make anyone in the story sound good. That like this, this is not, um, at first glance, this does not seem like the most encouraging story that Jesus could have chosen to illustrate the dynamic that's at play when we bring our requests to God. But anytime we have a parable, we have to ask the question, well, who is us and who is God? Who is us and who is God? And who is us in this question? Us is you. Us is the you that Jesus mentions in the story. He says, suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight and you said, I didn't know this. Us is you. So you are the person in the story. You are you. Us is you. You are you. That's great. Isn't that, isn't that fantastic? You in the story doesn't come off looking real great. You is un, uninformed, unprepared, short-sighted, and the rude neighbor. That's who, that's who you are. Aren't you glad that that's how Jesus described you? Then if, if you're thinking like, whoa, that's how Jesus described me. Like, that's how Jesus described me too. That's how Jesus described us. You're the, we're, we're the uninformed, unprepared, short-sighted, rude neighbor. Uninformed because you didn't know the friend was coming or you didn't know when the friend was coming. You knew like a friend showed up, a friend was on the way. You didn't know when they were getting there or you didn't even know that your friend was getting there. This person that you care about so much that you have to get bread for, you didn't even know they were coming or you didn't know when they were going to get there. You're unprepared, meaning that maybe you knew the friend was coming and you didn't prepare. So now your irresponsibility has become someone else's problem. Is that ever true of you? I think that's true of me sometimes. We're short-sighted, meaning they're at, you're asking for an immediate need, not a long-term solution. Because, hey, at midnight, you'll have bread, but you still won't have breakfast in the morning. And you might need to come back. And you might need to come back. You solved one problem, but you haven't solved your bigger problem. And you were rude, meaning we are inconveniencing the neighbor and a whole family when you know they're in bed because of your problem. Now, uh, in, in this story, us doesn't look too good in this scenario, do we? Us doesn't look too good, but let me ask a difficult question. 
Is that not a good depiction of us in prayer? Is that not an accurate depiction of us in prayer? Because when I come to God with my request, I am rarely coming to Him fully informed, right? Like I come with limited understanding. When I come to God with my request, I'm often coming to God because I'm somewhat unprepared for what is happening in life that is usually a fairly natural part of life. I'm asking God to solve a problem that has been caused by me not being prepared, by me not playing my part, by me not holding up to my responsibilities. When we come to God with our request, we're coming coming short-sighted. We just want to get what we want in the immediate moment with little thinking or perspective about any longer-term thoughts, any, any longer-term consequences, any longer-term after-effects. Like we come thinking, I just got to solve this problem without thinking, well, what happens if we solve this problem in a way that, that causes problems down the road? And we often come to, we, we, we come to God, and I don't even know if this is the right word for it, but we come, kind of come rude by human standards. We come at all hours of the day with no regard for what else God may be working on, with little thought for what else God may be doing. And we get really impatient that if God hasn't answered our prayer, we turn our backs on God, we come rel relatively rude and we make our problems his problems. That's who we are. That's who you are. That's who I am in this parable. But unless you think we come off bad, Jesus's description of God's response isn't, an exam isn't exactly an encouragement fest over here, okay? Because who is, you want to know who God is in the, in the parable? Who is God? Well, God is the annoyed neighbor who has what you need, but won't give it to you unless you keep asking and bothering him. In fact, I don't know why this caught my attention so much this week. God's concern is not waking up the kids in, from, from their sleep. And notice, in, in, in the, the, the neighbor person is sitting up in bed, yelling to someone at the front door, everyone's already awake. I, I, I don't know if you have toddlers. I don't know if you have kids who have ever been in bed with you. You know you can't whisper without them waking up. He's sitting up in bed, yelling to the front door, go away, everyone's tucked in. The concern is not waking everyone up. The concern is if I have to get out of this bed and untuck myself, it's gonna untuck Johnny. And if I untuck Johnny, Susie's gonna roll over. And if ever, like, 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 it's just gonna be really, really inconvenient doesn't make God sound real good, does it? That God could get you what you need, but he just doesn't want to be inconvenient? That, like, that doesn't sound particularly, like, doesn't make God sound very loving and generous and willing to help. So then, after Jesus' not-so-generous description of you and us, and after Jesus' not-so-flattering depiction of God, here is Jesus' grand conclusion, which, which wraps it up. The guy in the bed, he has whatever you need, and if you keep knocking long enough and loud enough, this guy will finally get himself up out of bed and will give you whatever you need, not because of your existing relationship or friendship and not because of the goodness in his own heart. He will give it to you because of what Jesus calls your shameless persistence. Your shameless persistence. You keep knocking, he'll keep yelling. You keep knocking, he'll keep yelling. You keep knocking, eventually he's going to open the door, hand you the bread, and go, go home, stop knocking. I'm trying to get everyone to stay in bed and stay asleep and be tucked in. I'm not coming to the door again. Go home. Here's what you need. Your shameless persistence will get from the neighbor what you can't, what the neighbor wouldn't naturally want to give you. Here's Jesus' unflattering implication for God and for you. You're kind of annoying and God is kind of grumpy. <laughs> like, it's, like, I, like, as I wrote that in my notes, I was like, that can't be it. But I was like, I don't see anything else in the story. You're kind of annoying and God is kind of grumpy. God has what you need, but sometimes God won't give it to you until you annoy him and badger him into doing it. Isn't that encouraging? Remember this, remember this. The disciples asked Jesus to, to teach them to pray like him. In this moment, Jesus is saying, you want to know what I picture when I go to my heavenly father in prayer? Well, the reason my prayers are so effective is I view my father in heaven as a grumpy old man who just doesn't want to get out of bed and I've got to bother him until he gives me what I ask for. I mean, everybody sitting around is like, um... Uh, Jesus, your story got real weird and dark there. Like, uh, if you're saying this is your heavenly father, like, 
you you described your heavenly father kind of kind of weird and dark like it, I, it it took it took a weird turn and then off of that implication and visual Jesus draws his ultimate conclusion in verse 9 he said this and so i tell you keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for keep on seeking and you will find Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Now in these verses, we get a command and a promise, or we get what in, what in legal terms would be called an if and then conditional. An if then conditional. If you blank, I will blank. If you blank, I will blank. And the command here is you keep asking, you keep seeking, you keep knocking. And the conditional I will, the promise is that everyone who asks, so you keep asking because everyone who asks will receive. You keep on seeking because everyone who seeks will find. And you keep knocking because everyone who knocks, a door will be opened. The door will be open. So Jesus says, don't stop asking, don't stop seeking, don't stop knocking. Don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling. No, that's not, that, that, that part wasn't in there. Just see if you're paying attention. Just see if you're still paying attention. Jesus says, don't stop asking because when you ask, you will receive. If you keep asking, you will receive. Don't stop seeking because if you keep seeking, you will find. And don't stop knocking because if you keep knocking, the door will be opened to you. The bottom line, according to Jesus, about how to receive from God when you pray, about how, about, about how to bring your requests to God, how to come to God asking for what, whatever you feel you need to ask for, is simply this. You keep asking and never, ever stop. You keep asking and you never, ever stop. When we're asking that God would heal someone who is sick, you keep asking and you never, ever stop. If you're single and you're asking that God would bring the right person into your life at the right time, you keep asking and you never, ever stop. When you're praying for your family members to know and love Jesus in a real way, you keep praying and you never, ever stop. When you're praying for strength to fight daily temptations, you keep praying for strength and you never, ever stop. This is what we call, and this is what Jesus would refer to in the, in the thing that he just taught, taught us, as persistent prayer. As persistent prayer. And here's my definition of persistent prayer, and I think this lines up perfectly with what Jesus just taught us about persisting in prayer. Persistent prayer is prayer that keeps coming to God over and over again until the day that God answers with a clear yes or a resounding no. Let me say that again. Persistent prayer is prayer that keeps coming to God over and over again until the day that God answers with a clear yes or a resounding no. This is the prayer that just never stops until God answers one way or another. This is the prayer that says, if God didn't give a clear answer today, I'm gonna come back to him with it tomorrow. And if he doesn't come with a clear answer tomorrow, I'm gonna come the next day and the next day and the next day and the next week and the next month and the next year until there is an answer, until God answers my prayer with a clear yes or a resounding no. I'm gonna keep coming, but I'm not going to let the fact that God didn't answer my prayer visibly with a yes or a no immediately when I asked it, keep me from coming back the next day. Like I am going to, I'm going to refuse to settle until I have an answer to my prayers. See, this is the prayer that is discontented with simply praying. And when we don't get the answer we hope for immediately, we pack up our bags and go home and assume that God didn't want to or won't do what we wanted him to do. That when we don't get an answer, we assume the answer is no. But sometimes God is just not giving an answer or is waiting for his timing or is waiting for us to keep coming to him or wants us to keep coming to him so that we know that he provides and not someone else provides. But he wants us to keep coming to him. I think for some of us, the reason that our prayers go unanswered is we give up and we give in far too easily and far too quickly when Jesus has called us and commanded us to live a life of persistent prayer. See, Jesus taught, this is, this is the whole thing of the parable, Jesus taught that there is power in our persistence. There is power in our 
persistence. See, when, when, when it comes to pray, praying with persistence, like I, I think back to the time when we were, when we were first planting the church, when we were in the, the pre-launch stage, when we were getting to the, the, the four or five months that we spent living in Las Cruces, trying to build a team you know, to, to launch our, our weekend services. And, and one of the prayers that I had been praying the entire time, you know, from when we moved over here in September until, until we were going to launch in January was, God, we, 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 I, we need band members. We need a worship team. Like, like you know, I, 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 I play a bunch of instruments, but can only play one at a time. Um, we had, you know, by, by December, we had one other person who had committed to being in, but um, a, a drummer and a vocalist does not a band make, right? And so I remember I, I had been praying and I'd been praying every day for three months, you know, four months for, for, for band members to, 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 to get engaged and to, and to get involved. And I had asked a number of people and I had been calling a number of people and people weren't returning my calls and people were kind of on the fence and going, oh, I'm not really sure. Like, I don't know if I want to be a part of that. I'm not sure. And it, and it, and it was frustrating. And I remember the week before Christmas, I committed, I was like, you know what? I, I've read in the Bible, there are some things that only come about by prayer and fasting. And so I'm going to fast. And so I, I took the week before Christmas and I decided that I was going to take breakfast and lunch every day for, for seven days. And I was going to fast. And in that time, I was going to pray that God, I would spend that, all of that time, entire time praying and fasting that God would bring us the band that we needed for the church that we wanted to be. And so I remember like day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, like fasting and praying. And every time I would go, I'm like, God, we just need it. And I would expect like, is it going to happen? Like, is it going to happen today? Like, and that whole week, it didn't happen. Like I said, that was the week before Christmas. The next week, by Christmas Eve, we had a full band for our church. Like it was unreal. When there are those verses that say, you keep praying and you don't give up. You keep knocking. If you keep knocking, the door will be open. You keep asking and you will receive. You keep seeking and you will find. Like I, I saw it play out in a vivid way. Everyone who I had been calling and had re- hadn't been returning my calls and everyone who had been on the fence, everyone who hadn't been returning my calls returned my calls with a yes. Everyone who was on the fence got off the fence and said yes. There was even a few people who didn't, who I didn't, who I, I had not asked and did not have my phone number, who got my phone number from other people to reach out and say, hey, I believe this last week God told me that I'm supposed to be a part of your team and I would love to play on your worship team. Like it was unreal the way God answered that prayer. And I genuinely believe that God answered the prayer because it was a persistent prayer. It was a knock, 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 knock. And I'm not going to stop asking it because there is power in our persistent prayer. Here's how Jesus's brother James talked about persistent prayer. Maybe it ran in the family. In James chapter 5, verse 16, James said, the heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. There is power in our persistent prayer. So here's the challenge from Jesus today. Maybe you're trying to get God to do a lot with a little prayer when God has promised he'll do a lot with your lot of prayer. Maybe, just maybe, you're praying in a way that is giving up far too easily. You're praying in a way that's like, God, you know, I believe you can do whatever, so here's you go, and then we move on. When God is saying like, hey, I will do a lot, but I'm not going to do a lot with your little. I mean, I can but I've asked you and I've commanded you and I've instructed you to keep coming and to keep asking and to keep seeking and to keep knocking. And so I'll do a lot when you pray a lot. There is power in our persistence. God has told us through Jesus that he wants us to keep coming, keep asking, keep seeking, and keep knocking. And maybe, just maybe, the reason that we haven't been receiving and the doors haven't been opened and we haven't been finding is because we have not been praying with the persistence that Jesus instructed us and God has invited us to live in. Maybe we're not receiving because you don't keep asking. Maybe you're not finding because you don't keep seeking. Maybe you're not having the doors open for you because you don't keep knocking and maybe everything that you want from God is on the other side of your persistence in prayer. So here's the thing, a couple notes about God's promises in this parable. Number one is that God will give you whatever you need, not whatever you ask for. He will give you whatever you need, not whatever you ask for. And there is a significant difference. See, because you come to God in prayer, as we said before, with your limited perspective and your limited understanding, just like I come with my limited perspective and limited understanding, and you can't always see that what you're asking God for may actually hurt you in the long run. You may be praying for a romantic relationship when God knows that right now a relationship would wreck you. 
You may be praying that God will fix that jerk in your family when God knows that what you need is for God to heal your heart. Because if he fixed that jerk in your family without healing your heart, you'll go ahead and break the relationship again because of your damaged and broken heart. And so God will give you what you need, not what you're, not necessarily everything that you're asking for. From the parable, we are told that God has what you need and he'll give you whatever you need not that he'll give you whatever it is that you're asking for. If you're coming asking God for something that will hurt you, that will cause you damage, that will cause more brokenness in the long run, God will not give you what you're asking for, but he will give you whatever you need. Second thing is simply this, that you will find in God's timing, not your timing. You will find in God's time, not when you're seeking and you're seeking and you're seeking, we promise, whoever seeks will find and whoever seeks, whoever keeps seeking will find. What I, what I know about you and what I know about me is that I, I know that when I seek and when you seek, you want to find immediately. I want to find immediately. God wants us to find according to his time. God wants us to find according to his time. He wants us to find our fit and our people and our place and our purpose and our gifting according to his timing. See, our timing is right now. God's timing is when time is right our timing is right now. God's timing is when the time is right. And in the process of you coming to find, coming to God persistently in prayer, God gets the time in the meantime to shape you for when the time is right. God will answer your prayer and you will find in God's timing, not your own timing. And in the delay there, we want to push back and we want to resist and we want to assume that it's a no and it's a no and it's a no. And when God is simply saying, it's not a no, it's a not yet. And there's some work that I want to do in you. And there's some work I want to do behind the scenes. And there's some work I want to do around you. So make sure that when you are, when the timing is right, that you are ready and everything's ready for you. You will find in God's timing, not your timing. Third thing is simply this. God will open the door, not necessarily the one you're knocking on. For some of us, for some of us, this may be one of the most eye-opening things. This may free you up in some really big ways. God will open the door, not necessarily the one that you're knocking on. Just like there are times when we are asking God for something that would hurt us, God knows there are paths we attempt to travel without knowing what lies on that path, not knowing the pressure, not knowing the chaos, not knowing the harm that lies down the road. So we're knocking on a door that God refuses to open because he knows what's on the other side of the door is destruction. And God will not open a door of destruction for you. And in those moments, I have learned that there is a choice. You can keep knocking on the door that God won't open, or you can walk through the door that he has already opened. You can keep knocking, God, I got, you got to open. You promise, you promise if I knock, you'll open the door. And God's saying, I promise I will open the door, but I didn't promise I'm going to open that one. And you can keep knocking on the door that God refuses to open, or you can take a step back and look around and go, God, is there a door that you have already opened? Is there a door that you have already opened because this path is a path that you know what lies ahead and you know it's no good for me, but you've opened that door and I'm supposed to walk down there. He has promised that he will open the door, the one that he wants you to walk through. And maybe for some of us, it is time to stop staring angrily at the, at the closed door that we have been banging on and to look around to see the door or the doors that God has already opened, that God has promised he will open the door but he hasn't promised that he'll open the one that you're banging on. Persist in prayer always because there is power in our persistent prayer. Pray always. Be persistent in prayer always because there is power in our persistent prayer. Now, one one last thing here as as, as we begin to close. What about what this says about God? Like again, it, like God doesn't come off really good. Is God really that grumpy and tired and withholding what we need because it's inconvenient for him to get out of bed? Like, is that really who God is? I'm glad you asked that question. Here's what's amazing about God. God sent his son Jesus to come into the world to teach us what God is like and to invite us into a relationship with our heavenly father. And in teaching about our heavenly father and inviting us into a relationship with him, Jesus gave us this 
parable, this illustration, this visual lesson, God, through Jesus, has told us, keep coming, keep coming, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking, and don't you dare worry about bothering, and don't you dare worry about badgering your God. God is okay. He has invited you. He has invited you up front to keep on coming all the time, every day, every hour, whenever it's on your mind, and you won't bother him. This is what God has instructed us to do. He gave us the illustration, not because it's the perfect illustration of God, but because it's the perfect illustration of how God wants you to come to your heavenly Father. That God wants you to keep coming, to keep asking, to keep seeking, to keep knocking, until the point where you think you're bothering the person on the other side. That's how God has invited you to approach him in prayer. He has invited you to keep on coming all the time, every single day, every single hour, whenever it's on your mind, not because he's withholding from you until he's bothered by you, but simply because he wants you to keep coming to him with everything. The way I wrote it for the notes is simply this. God has invited you to bother him and badger him for whatever you want because he wants you to keep coming to him for everything you need. God has invited you and has invited me to bother him and to badger him for whatever you want because he wants you to keep coming to him all the time for everything that you need. God wants to be your source. God wants to be the person you run to. And the reason Jesus wanted us to establish all of the other priorities in prayer before we got to the coming to God with whatever you want for whatever and whatever you need thing is that God wanted us to align our hearts and to align our values and to submit our hearts and to submit our and surrender our lives and to remember that we come to God for everything because he's our provider and we come to him for salvation because he's the only one that can save and we come to him for transformation because he's the only one that can change us and we come to him for strength because he's the only one that has real strength, that we come to him for everything we need. And we can also come to him with everything we want. God wants us to remember and wants us to continually be reminded in prayer that he is our source, that he is our provider, that he's our father, that he's our savior, that he has and he is everything we need. And so we keep coming to him with everything that we want because God wants us to come to him for everything that we will ever need. And so here's the question as we, as we're like, so, so like, what should we bring to God? I think you can bring everything to God. I think you can bring all your wants and your hopes into your desires and know that in God's timing, God's going to say no to some things that you want right now because there are things that he can't give you until down the road. There are some things that you come and God's going to say, I know you want that, but that's no good for you, but I will give you what you need. There are some things that will knock on certain doors and God will say, I'm not going to open that door, but I will open the door. And we can come to God with all of our requests and come with a humble heart that says, God, if you say no, or if you say not yet, or if you say there and said, I will go where you want me to go. God, I'm coming to you because you have and you are everything that I ever need. You can come to God with everything. You can come to God with every request. But if I could challenge us maybe today, there's a couple things that maybe we should be a little more persistent about in prayer. See, I think that you should never stop praying for your future. Whatever your future looks like is up to God. It's in the hands of God and it's, it's in the hands of you. But it's also in the hands of your prayers with your heavenly father. You should never stop praying for your future because your future will be determined by God and it will be determined by you. And as you connect with God, things align in your future. You should never stop praying for your future. You should never stop praying for your family. There's two institutions that God, that God, institu- that, that God has instituted in the world. There's the family and the church. There's the family and the church. You should never stop praying for your family, you should never stop praying for your church. You should never stop praying for your family, for your loved ones, for your parents. You should never stop praying for your husband and wife. You should never stop praying for your kids. You should never stop praying for the people that you are related to. You should never stop praying for your family because it's instituted by God. There are people in your life that you are deeply connected with and you should never stop praying for your family. You should never stop praying for your church. It's the other institution that God created from, that, that God has instituted in the world. 
We should never stop praying for healthy, strong local churches. We should never stop praying for our church, that God would use us to reach our community and to reach our world and to reach our city and to reach as many lost people as God wants to reach through us and that God would help us to become strong families and help us to become stronger disciples and become stronger people who love Jesus and love the world around us and use our daily lives to do what God wants to do in and through us, that we would be stronger because of our, of our local church. You should never pr- stop praying for, 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 lo- for your lost loved ones, that if you have family members or if you have neighbors or coworkers that you care deeply for and they don't know Jesus, you should never stop praying until God answers with a yes and they come to know Jesus. You should never stop praying for them. You should never stop praying for the sick to be healed. If there's someone in your life that you know is sick and it feels like the, that, that like you've been praying for a day and you've been praying for a week and you've been praying for a month and there hasn't been a clear answer, you don't stop praying when the answer hasn't been yes, because that is God, I believe, saying not yet. I haven't finished the work for them yet. We don't stop praying for the sick to be healed. And here's a great thing. On Mother's Day, on Mother's Day, for you moms who are watching, there is nothing like the power of a praying mom. There is nothing like the power of a praying mama, a praying mom who prays for their kids and who prays for their home and who prays for their kids as school and prays for their kids as teachers and prays that their, that their kids would walk the steps that God would have them, have them to walk and stay on the path that God has for them. There is nothing like the power of a praying mom. And I just want to encourage you, moms, Would you be persistent in prayer? Because your prayers won't just change your world. It'll change your family's world. It'll change your kids' world. It may shape your child's future in ways that you can't even begin to see. Let's be persistent in prayer. Let's, as moms and as dads, as husbands, as wives, as single people, as people who are, you know, like coming out of different things in life, let's be people who persist in prayer because there is power in our persistence. And on that note, let me pray for us right now. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you that you have invited us to call you our Heavenly Father in prayer. And thank you that you have told us that you want us to keep coming over and over and over and over and over again, that you want for us to be persistent in our prayer. Thank you that you have invited us into that type of life. Thank you that you have promised that if we keep asking, we will receive. And if we keep seeking, we will find. And if we keep knocking, the door will be opened for, for us. Thank you that you have made those promises and given us that instruction. God, I pray today that you would give us the courage and the strength of character to keep on asking, to keep on seeking, to keep on knocking, knowing that you will help us to receive, that you will give out of your generous hands, that you will help us find what it is that we need to find, and you will open the door. Help us to have the strength of character to keep on coming, to be persistent in our prayer, knowing that you will answer. So God, we love you. We thank you for what you are doing in our hearts and in our lives. We pray for futures right now. We pray for families right now. I pray for our a strong church right now as, as Movement Church. I pray for, for lost loved ones to come to know you. I pray for the sick to be healed right now in Jesus' name. And God, we're never gonna stop praying for those things. We love you and we pray that you would do what only you can do in response to our prayers, that you would show yourself strong, you'd show yourself loving, and you'd show yourself good. We love you. We pray this all in Jesus' strong name.
The King is in the room. Come see the scars of love upon his hands. The King is in the room. We'll watch the darkness flee at his command. Who is this king? Who is this king? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Light of the world. There's freedom in his name. Awesome in power. Reigning forever. Light of the world. There's freedom. Victor 
There's freedom in his name. There's freedom in his name. Well, once again, I want to say thank you so much for joining in with us today, for, for taking part in Church Online. Thank you so much for that. Once again, moms, if you haven't liked the video yet, want to make sure, please go ahead and like that video so that we can make sure we donate and, and, and donate the $5 for you to, to, to Turning Point Pregnancy on behalf of Movement Church. We just want to say thanks so much for doing that. We love you and we appreciate you as moms and we want to honor you and want to bless our community on your behalf. I uh, also want to let you know, next, series, next week, we begin a brand new series called How to Read. We're going to spend two weeks talking about how to read the Bible and how to get as much out of the Bible as we're supposed to get out of the Bible. If you're like, how do we start? Where do we start? How do I do this? How do I get more out of it? We're going to talk about all of that for the next two weeks, so don't miss next week. I also wanted to let you know a couple other ways to engage with their church. First of all, we want to say if you want to give, we want to let you know the ways that you can give. You can give online. You can give with a text. You can give with our cash app. You can give uh, by sending cash or check in the mail to our post office box that's on screen right now. But however and whenever you give, I just want to say thank you for your generosity. Thank you for making the work of the church possible by funding the church and making the church, making sure the church is fully funded to do and to be everything God has called us to do and to be. Thank you so much for your generosity. Also want to let you know if you have a need right now, we want to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you by email, by phone, by Facebook. Let us know what your need is so that we know how to pray for you and we know how we can meet your need. We want to hear from you if you have a need. And then finally, if you have kids in elementary or preschool, our kids experience Experiences online are ever are every Sunday at 10 a.m. on both Facebook and YouTube, and we would love for you to jump over there if you have kids. They're a great way to 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 keep your kids' faith going and growing online. If you're if you're part of our online community, even if you're part of our in-person family, they're a great way to keep engaged with what's happening in in, in our in our in-person kid services to keep it keep your kid engaged and plugged in all week long. And they're, they're, they're there from 10 a.m. on as long as the internet exists. So that's all we've got for you today. Can't wait to see you next week. And until then, keep being the movement.